Hello and welcome to session number 13 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. We made it this far. How far can we go? Let's find out. Hello, everyone. Oh, intro. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Glad to have you here for one more session. <laughs> uh. <laughs> for the final session thank you thank you yeah 13 feels like a good number of sessions for a full campaign i figured i'd uh, um but remember oh. next week is halloween which means that our characters will rise from the dead and <laughs> we'll be zombies this is actually just a really long drawn out homebrew prelude to descent into avernus <laughs> That was the actual campaign all along. Yeah, that was the plan. We're actually completely on the script still. I mean... I prefer I'll take that it. to the alternative, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about the best to note for now. <laughs> oh, no, normally I have, like, the, 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 the banner that says Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, but I started straight in the colony for some reason. Oh. <laughs> like, I was... That's Very okay. nervous about it. Ah, here, here it is. Da, da, da. There's the title. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Okay. Why don't we begin like we usually do and let uh, uh, Dennis take over and remind us of uh, what happened the last time? All right. Are you all prepared? Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Nice. <laughs> okay, um, the session started pretty calm after Talix and Pip explained Liana what happened, what had went down. The rest of the group collects the money for their job done. Outside, the group makes their first grave mistake of the, of the session. They decide how <laughs> to return the gun, and after a while come to the conclusion that we deliver it in person. Another <laughs> promise that Talix will take over the talking, since this was Talix and Pontifex wish. <laughs> the, the next early afternoon can be summarized in selling the goodies, seeing a second metal bird, Pip and Pontifex receiving numerous coupons and advertisements and letters, and we get invited to Liana's home for dinner in the evening. I for some reason forgot the butcher stuff, but you can just put that under selling the goodies. <laughs> The group then decides to go to the gnomes, but right before we enter their camp, everyone backs down from their responsibilities, and Brooke, rolling <laughs> eyes emoji, is being decided as a messenger. <laughs> While walking to the main tent, we all hear a song hummed and sang by the gnomes, which I now understand as a foreshadowing or warning even. The gnomes sang their version of the song, of the song Gunman by the famous gnomish singer <laughs> David Nomi. I'll recite the chorus <laughs> as follows. <clears throat> Don't worry. No copyright strike. I will just read it out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to pause the music so you can? Sure, if you can't hear me properly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Let's, yeah. <clears throat> All right, just the chorus of the song Gunman by David Nomi. There are gunmen waiting in the tent. They'd like for us to wait there, otherwise we'll end up dead. There are gunmen <laughs> waiting in the tent. They told us just to sit still or they will blow up our hand. Oh yeah. <laughs> Let's just sit there quiet. Please don't start a riot. Let all the gnomes come down, gunmen. <clears throat> when Zarkus... <laughs> uh... When Zarkus, the gnome in charge, leaves the tent to check in our... To check in on our identities for 10 minutes, Tekka feels the incredible and mysterious need to walk around. The gnomes get upset. Tekka stops walking. The situation calms down. But then, Pontifex feels another incredible and mysterious need to start casting a spell. Which the gnomes <laughs> do not like either. But Pontifex does not back down. The situation explodes. Pontifex gets shot. Brooke gets charmed. Pip hides after some more voodoo magic. And Tekka prepares a nap while transforming the tent into our giant blanket. 
How do the heroes get out of the situation this time? What consequences will this bring for their future? And how will the relationship in between the group change? Find out next time or this time in the Outlander's <laughs> Guide to Lidaria. <laughs> okay. There are gun men waiting in the tent. <laughs> 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 yeah, but that's the song. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dennis. Um, I don't have my inspiration, please. I might uh, need it. So <laughs> 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 you did end up doing the thing you were joking about where you rewrote history. Yeah. <laughs> But instead of using it to undo the trouble with the gnomes, you just added in a song. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're exactly the kind of person who can be trusted with unlimited power because you would not abuse it. Uh. <laughs> uh. True, 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 true. true. <laughs> you can brook unlimited power. Go along with it, Dennis. <laughs> brook can really use unlimited <laughs> power right now. <laughs> give me all the powers except for moderator rights on this tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> Every other power I'll take. Oh yeah, can you promote worst me? case scenario, we just flip this thing and say it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> all <Yeah>. right. <clears throat> not not so that I can delete any gnome miniatures or anything. This is your your test of personality where everybody gets a promotion, <laughs> but if anyone flips the table, um there, Please there, don't give me a promotion. There shall be consequences. <laughs> you get shot in real life. Also careful <laughs> because I have rebound some random keys on your keyboard <laughs> to flip the table. Okay. So uh, thread lightly. Please not WASD. Oh, no, Please this not could WASD. Be WASD. <laughs> Whenever my character goes unconscious, I like to method act and just f just j smash my whole face into my keyboard. <laughs> so chances are this thing's getting flipped. <laughs> you go unconscious in game, you go unconscious in real life. It's only right, otherwise you're metagaming. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I appreciate your dedication to the roleplay. Okay. <laughs> Session 13. You appreciate it now. <laughs> Just wait. When last we left off, the party was surrounded by armed gnomes approaching from every direction. Even if Talix is the only one who can actually see the number of guards swarming the area, the others beneath the collapsed tent can still hear the footsteps, the shouting, and the clanking of armor. And uh, being unable to look at the situation only makes you feel even more anxious. The notorious weapons of the gnomes have proven to be just as terrifying as the rumors made them out to be, as a single shot was enough to nearly claim Pontifex's life in an instant. The knowledge that dozens and dozens of those same weapons are about to be pointed your way is enough to make you quiver. Talix. Um, Zarka stands about 20 feet ahead of you, barking orders in a language you haven't yet had a chance to learn. As you hold your hands up in the air, hoping to peacefully diffuse the situation, your eyes do not focus on Zarka's, but on the movement behind her. 200 feet away, the burnished head of the largest creature you've ever seen emerges <laughs> from behind its wooden fence, as the Dragon of Vera locks eyes with you. Everyone is going to have one chance to tell me what kind of action you wish to perform. I'm going to hear from each of you, and I'm just going to hear you out in initiative order. Um, I will hear what your plan is, and after I hear from everyone, I will uh, resol resolve uh, those actions in whatever order feels like the most... Uh, <clears throat> the most reasonable. Uh, so I'm going to hear from Pip slash Austin uh, what the immediate action that uh, uh, Pip would like to take is. He is currently cowering under the tiny, tiny desk uh, that Zarkas was sitting behind earlier. Okay, so to clarify, 
Just one action, not a turn, one <clears throat> single action. Um, no, I do not mean an action in like the mechanical D&D term. Okay. I mean, uh, what is your immediate plan? Okay, so Pip hiding under this desk uh, is sort of quivering and shaking, trying to keep as quiet as as humanly possible, but is is struggling to keep his breathing down and is is almost hyperventilating at this point. Um, I think that in this moment moment of panic, uh, Pip is going to um, pull out his doll again underneath the desk and cast disguise self and just try and and uh, create this appearance of being one of the gnomes uh, as much as possible trying to fit in with whatever rank and file that they appear in. So whatever uniform they might be wearing, whatever, you know, just try and get that as close as possible. Mm -hmm. As far as Pip has seen uh, um, the uniform among uh, the armed gnomes, is identical among everyone that Pip has seen, except for Zarkas, who has like a more uh, distinctive look to her. Um, the people who were building the railway were not dressed in a uniform, and they had more varied, just common clothes. So you <clears throat> you're trying to appear like the armed ones or like Ye the workers. I think the armed ones, just so it, it appears more more uniform. Okay. Then I'll get back to you. Uh, Tekka, Sid, yeah. what, would your, what is your character planning to do? Tekka holds up part of the tent cloth for a moment. And his gaze switches between... Pontifex and Brook. He's breathing heavily. Very clearly nervous and out of his element. And give me one moment. He turns quickly to Brook and says, Brooke, protect him at any cost. I'll distract them. And Tekka will start moving towards the entrance of the tent. What was the entrance of the tent? Leaving the tablecloth as security. Uh, tent cloth. Okay. So probably standing next to Talix. All right. Uh, after speaking and to Brooke, Tekka will be heading for the entrance of the tent, uh, sort of like feeling his way, and he's planning to get to where, well, where Talix currently is. Um, Wait, what did you give me? Nothing, he, right? No, I just gave you no, instructions. No, no. Okay, okay. He said, yeah. uh, Brook, protect yep. him at any cost. Mm -hmm. Protect uh, Pontifex. Okay, then I'll get back to you. Uh, <laughs> Talix being the only person uh, currently outside and uh, with your hands up in the air. Um, what is your plan? There's not much of a plan. He's just kind of panickedly trying to say whatever he can to defuse the situation. Um, he's going to be looking both to... Uh, Sorry, Zar... Zarkas, Zar here. Uh, Zarkas, okay. Both to Zarkas and the dragon, and just say, Please, please, this is all just a misunderstanding. Oh, everyone in there is harmless. They can't hurt you anymore. Uh, one of us is wounded, but... That's it, okay. You, sh you shot us, it's fine. Please, we're, we're totally harmless. Just let us... Let us surrender peacefully. Okay, um, you're saying this to Zarkas? Or the dragon? Or both? Both. 
Okay. Just um, kind of shouting. Just yeah, sure. Yeah, the the, the dragon trying. is a few uh, is quite a distance away. Uh, but like if you're if you're shouting, the voice would uh, reach him. <clears throat> okay. Wait, him? I thought Zarkus. Was I don't know. I, no, 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 um, the dragon. The, the dragon. Oh, okay. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, Zarkus is Florida? right here. Like only a few. Um, uh, she is. Uh, Oh god, I Yeah, I just saw him and Zarkus was him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zarkus is like right ahead of Talix, but uh, the, yeah, the dragon is mainly because of his uh, size is within view, even if he is like almost 200 feet away. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Talix is going to attempt to address uh, Zarkus and just shouting uh, that uh, nobody in the group means any harm. Brook, what is your plan? Well, if I remember correctly, my last action was to sit down. <laughs> so when Tekka comes to me, before he leaves again, I would uh, grab his hand or his wrist and stop him for a second. Don't make it worse than it already is, please. <laughs> and... Then crawl towards Pontifex's location and sit next to him. Depending on where he is. Okay. Uh, Brooke is going to hold back Tekka for just a moment uh, and speak to him. And then you're staying back with Pontifex? Is that right? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, which leads us to, well, actually, before Pontifex, uh, uh, what is Squeak's current situation? Squeak uh, currently is tucked in Pip's um, shawl. Um, and I, I think that he's just going to stay there for the time being uh, in order to be Pip's voice if the need arises. Okay. Um... Small thing that actually uh, has come up in a different campaign, so I'm just gonna bring it up now. Um, this guy's self wouldn't like affect Squeak, but Squeak is like within the extents of the illusion itself. Uh, um, so as long as Squeak is like within a part of the illusion, he is also not visible. But he also has the option of just being invisible himself. Uh, right. Um, so is he currently invisible? Uh, I would say that if Squeak is not already, then Squeak would become so, <laughs> just for further protection. Okay, he's invisible, but he's not uh, missing from this. He's not uh, uh, away. Right. Okay, that's what I wanted to not be sure Not at the of. beach. <clears throat> not at the beach. <laughs> okay. Not at the beach. Uh, uh, Pon what is Pontifex's plan? <laughs> uh... I think uh, as Tekka starts to leave and Pontifex was, uh, he was holding a spell before almost like in defense, I guess, like, uh, like putting up his guard. Uh, I think he lets go of that one. And uh, like, I think he's like on the ground and I think he rolls over to his other side so that he can get access to the pouch on his hip and is uh, like rummaging through it and is saying, um, I will be in the dark no longer. Uh, and he finds uh, little bits of, uh, of like salt and soot, and like smears it between his fingers. And use I use my uh, my subclass feature to instantly cast comprehend languages. Right. Uh, remind me. That's like that doesn't use up your spell slots. No, it's a. Uh, I can use my, my book thing once per long rest to ritual cast something with its normal cast time. So yeah, it's a free cast of a ritual spell, basically. Okay. Does that take up... Uh, does that take away uh, the component part? Uh, the, the, like, words uh, and the somatic components? Uh, no, that's what he was doing with the salt and the soot. Okay. Uh, Those are the material components for comprehend languages. Right. Okay, okay, okay. In a case, uh, for everybody who is within the tent, uh, um, 
both Tech and Brooke are going to be hearing uh, the I believe both of the spells that, but correct me if I'm wrong, the Pip and Pontifex are casting have vocal components, yeah? Correct. Yep. Uh, both of them are going to be hearing uh, the uh, the voice of Pip coming uh, from Squeak and the voice of Pontifex. Uh, uh, even with the, <clears throat> the tent having collapsed uh, over you, uh, we can tell that arcane words are being spoken and some kind of... Uh, uh, Two kinds of spells are being cast uh, somewhere within a tent. Uh, Tekka with uh, Brooke's warning. Uh, you feel your way towards the outside of the tent, uh, ending up next to a shouting, begging Talix. Um, being held at uh, uh, gunpoint uh, from gnomes in every direction um the two of you both and both of you now being outside uh are going are going to see that as uh, zarkas has come uh, as close as she has about 20 feet away from you uh she holds up a hand and uh, every gnome in the area um with the tent now being collapsed you can see like all around you even behind you so just this sort of like circle of 10 20 maybe 30 people all armed all approaching uh every single one one of them acting at once they stop they no longer take any step toward the tent and then with a flick of the wrist from zarkas they all rest their rifles uh, up on their shoulders uh, still looking uh, um, attentive, on edge, even, some of them, uh, but no weapons being currently pointed uh, in your direction. Both of you, additionally, are going to see the dragon um, turn away from your direction and get a little bit closer to this uh, side of uh, what is called the wooden nest. And he's going to stick his head in the large opening of the temple, that large section of the rooftop and part of the wall in the corner facing the wooden nest uh, that is that has straight up never been built by, by design. Um, you see him stick his head in there. Um, okay. And we're gonna go from here. Uh, if any of the people in the tent uh, wish to leave or to um, perform some action that would affect things, let me know at any point. I'm just going to roleplay the conversation that's taking place outside and that all of you can hear. All right. Okay. So for, for Talix and Tekka being out, uh, um, Zarka does not come any further, but there's this, uh, um, there's this quietness that has followed uh, the noise of all these people approaching, of uh, um, all these foot footsteps all around you. Even uh, the colony of Vera, a few hundred feet away from you, uh, feels like it has quieted from the moment when a gunshot uh, rang out in the distance. Uh, uh, and the the faraway noises of everything, the people in the market and the animals uh, in the surroundings has all just gotten really quiet. Uh, Zarkas addresses you, uh, Talix being the one who has spoken to her, and still having one hand held up in sort of like this halt motion, but it's not, it's not towards you. Um, it's just like she's just holding up the hand while she speaks to you and says, Okay. I am going to hear from you what happened. Quickly now. Uh, I'm not entirely sure myself. Uh, I think one of my friends had a disagreement with one of the guards and... Uh, well, it escalated. Uh, my friend was trying to cast a spell to 
be able to speak your language is all. But all well, your guards took it as a, as some sort of act of aggression. And they shot him. Has he been hit? Yes, he's shot. Zarkas turns away, faces back, uh, in the same direction where Talix was looking at earlier, and her hand that was uh, held in this halt motion changes into a different uh, uh, gesture, sort of like pointing up at the, at the sky. Um, and she stands there, immobile, and she doesn't seem to be addressing with a gesture the gnomes around her, but instead she's looking at the wooden nest. Um, there comes this moment when uh, the dragon pulls his head out of uh, the building of the church, um, and he straightens his neck upward once more, and he sees, uh, looking back in your direction, the gesture and uh, um, you and Tekka both watch as wings <coughs> wider than entire buildings stretch out and glisten in the sunlight. Seconds after the dragon pushes down the wings, you can all feel the blast of the displaced air reaching you. Much of the dragon's brass scales have faded to a dark gray color, but the old beast is still as majestic in the air as he must have looked in his younger days. You both struggle to comprehend how something so big could possibly lift itself off the ground, and you feel your bodies instinctively tense up as the brass giant rises up into the air and comes straight in your direction. Something this big could kill you without even noticing it, just like you may step on an ant. Seconds later, everyone feels the ground shake as the dragon's massive claws dig into the earth, and an enormous shade is cast over all of you. Directly above you is the metallic belly of a dragon, its body and tail curled protectively all around you blocking your view in every direction except uh, forward towards uh, Vera and Zarkas herself. From the dragon's neck as uh, he lowers his head to the ground, uh, climbs that down uh, the figure of a woman, uh, a woman that Talix has seen once before as uh, Sarabeth uh, descends next to you and uh, um, glancing around and seeing and recognizing Talix, she just says where's the wounded? Just point to the tent. <clears throat> uh, Brooke, you feel the tent uh, uh, being uh, being touched and disp displaced uh, as somebody lifts up the opening uh, uh, where, where, the, where the opening used to be, where the cloth uh, uh, has fallen next to you. Um, you've, everyone inside of the tent has heard um, the enormous uh, noise, the ground shaking, something massive, uh, almost like falling all around you. And uh, you just see this, uh, this uh, human woman, uh, in uh, golden robes um, stepping in trying to look around but really only seeing Brooke from the current situation of the tent uh, and uh, just quickly giving him a uh, a brief glance from head to toe uh, as she addresses you Brooke and says who is hurt? <clears throat> Can I point in Pontifex direction? Yeah, you sort of like held up your arm, uh, lifting up part of the of the tent as you do, and she uh, moves along, feeling uh, the um, the tent as she steps forward uh, until she ends up finding the uh, the lump of the tent where where Pontifex would be. Uh, Pontifex, you've heard halt is, and then you also find yourself in front of this uh, uh, golden dressed woman who. Um, 
kneels down next to you and uh, extends a hand, but first uh, sort of sort of like pauses for a moment and uh, quickly, almost uh, almost in a in a snappy manner, uh, just says, "May I?" I think Pontifex is like cradling that gold orb thingamajig of his. Uh, I think he like tightens his grip on it audibly and uh, just nods. She lowers her hand uh, onto the the blood stained uh, clo uh, cloth of your of your pants, uh, uh, where there is uh, just this very. Uh, uh, the blood is just like pouring out, almost spitting out of the wound. Uh, the moment when she touches it, you barely feel her fingers, almost like just the slightest uh, uh, caress, like just a feather uh, touched uh, your skin. And it, it doesn't sting. Uh, it doesn't feel like anything. It just feels like absence of pain. Uh, sudden and uh, wonderful. You heal 20 hit points. Um, real quick, can you give uh, me a little bit more of a description of like her features now that Pontifex can actually see her up close? Ah, uh, absolutely. Uh, the golden robes, uh, the decorated scimitar on her hip, uh, um, and the the symbol that she wears uh, around her neck uh, uh, makes her very clearly uh, to anyone who knows anything about religions from Plurna, uh, a servant uh, of uh, the lion. And uh, the... Uh... <clears throat> Hold on, I lost my spot in the notes. <laughs> is she, uh, like, is she a human, an elf? She's a human. Assuming she's human, she, yeah, okay. I assume she's not an elf if she's a cleric mm -hmm. <laughs> one of the deities. Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, she's a, a she's a human. Um, she has the, the this uh, sort of like um, the robes are wider on her uh, than her the figure of her body should be. So you can tell, and you can also hear a little bit of clanking um, that she's wearing some kind of armor that is uh, uh, pretty much as bulky as your own is. Uh, in terms of, like, body, she seems just strong. Like, the, the weapon on her hip looks almost fake for how highly decorated it is. It looks like one of those weapons that are, like, made of gold that look... Amazing, like you'd hang it on a wall, but they're uh, not actually made for fighting. Uh, but she looks like she could lift a weapon twice uh, its size really easily. Okay. Uh, Talix and Tekka, you guys uh, currently have uh, um, the view of just the belly of uh, an impossibly big dragon. Uh, just, there's no way that <laughs> this model is going to represent it, but it's uh, like sort of like curled around you, almost like a, a mother would around its egg. Hey, I think this is a good sign, Tekka. Mm. Oh. For now. Can I can I be reminded of the dragon's name? We've heard it before, but oh, I yes, just... absolutely. Ralzir um... Gamir. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's no way I can actually put down the mini and make it work. So um, he's just gonna chill over here. <laughs> uh, yes, perfect. Exactly spelled like that. Uh, from how close you are to it, to his belly. Uh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> just like that. Uh, you can just feel the raspy. <laughs> breathing just in and out you breathe in uh 10 or even more times before Razagamir has taken a single breath in um there's every 
every fiber in your body is telling you that uh, uh, this is dangerous. It's not something that you should be next to. Uh, you just feel so small compared to it. Uh, but it is currently the only thing separating you from all the gnomes around you. Oh, it's a good sign. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Mm, we okay. are Thank you not for your uh, aid, whatever your name is. Um, she, after having kneeled down to to heal your neck, she stands back up. Uh, her head just sort of pulling up a little bit at the tent, uh, um, and uh, okay, keeping just a serious expression on her face. She says. Lady Sarabeth. Lady Sarabeth. I will not forget it soon. Can you and uh, Pontifex is going to scramble to his feet as well. Yeah. Uh, if she sees him struggling, she's going to like pull him up. And uh, um, she'll offer to actually like, hold him up. Uh, um, the, I, think, I think the injury isn't fully gone, right? Like you're not healed to full. Uh, right. Um, it's he's he's fine. Okay. Uh, he's been in worse off like in previous altercations, so he's fine. I think he mm -hmm. like you know accepts the hand and the help getting to his feet, but afterwards he kind of lets go and gives her like the, the open palm of like I'm good, chief. <laughs> All right. Uh, in which case she's just going to hold up her arms uh, to help like um, lift up as much with the tent as she can. So. Uh, you can like catch a glimpse of where the exit actually is as she's between you and Brooke. Uh, Pip, you haven't seen any of this, but you've heard everything else taking place around you. Are you still yeah, Pip under the table? Pip is so scared right now. <laughs> uh, like, impossibly scared. He's not going to budge at all yet. Did any of us see where Pip went? We didn't, right? It wasn't at 20. To your knowledge, he should still just be somewhere in the tent. You haven't seen him, uh, but with the tent having collapsed, uh, you just lost sight of him. But you've never... Uh, you were actually like close to the, entr to the entrance the entire time, so yet at least you know you haven't seen him go out. The only person you've seen leave the tent from the entrance was Tekka. All right, after Pontifex stands up, I would also start standing up slowly. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. You're, you're going to be able to stand up. You sort of like hold up one arm to uh, not get the, the rough cloth of the tent just dragging against your face uh, as you stand. Um, and uh, well, outside, while, while Sarabeth was uh, um, dealing with Pontifex, I think Sid, uh, well, Tekka was about to say something. We are not in control. Do not rest easy. Alex is just going to nod. Um, so, within the Circle of Dragon is us, Serbeth, and Zarkus is in here? Yeah, um, imagine that the dragon is like facing back towards Vera, so you know, the head would be in this direction. So, all around is like the tail and the rest of the body, but in between the two front legs, you can see like forward. Um, so mm. uh, Zarkas is still like a short distance away from you. Um, and she, she, you actually see her when, when a dragon lands and then lowers his head to let Serebeth climb down. Um, Talix and Tekka would both see um, Zarkas just sort of uh, uh, like uh, pull down her hand that she had been holding up uh, and do this quick um, sort of like bow just with his, just with her head, not with the rest of the body, just uh, lower her head a little bit. And she says, your radiance. And you see uh, the few gnomes that you can see besides Zarkus are the ones that are directly behind her. Uh, so you're seeing like three or four of them max. Everybody else is out of your view. And you see all of them, again, acting as one, uh, all of them doing a bow, but it's, uh, for them it's a lot more forward. They actually bend their body forward. And they do that, and then they quickly pull themselves together, and it's all completely in sync.
Um, then she, uh, Zarkus is just going to address you again, and, uh, uh, she will say, Nobody is going to die in the domain of Razilgamir without his permission, so you do not have to fear anything like that. As for what happened, I'm going to hear again from all of you what exactly transpired, this time in the presence of his radiance. And we will be going from there. Is that acceptable to you? Take our knots. Yes, ma'am. Moments later, uh, Lady Sarabeth steps out of the tent and does this like quick, uh, uh, sort of like hand wiping gesture and says, Situation is under control. Um, the people inside the tent, are you leaving? <sighs> um, uh, does Sarabeth leave? Yes. Yeah, Pontifex would have followed her out for okay. sure. Yeah. Uh, you step out with her, Brooke and Pip. Wow. Okay. That... Oh. You go ahead. <clears throat> um, I guess Brooke would look around if he can see like any movement from someone that could be Pip. And since I'm assuming that he isn't leaving, uh, he would say, uh, Pip, we can get out of here. It's safe. And then I would make my way out. What is Pepe doing here in this? <sighs> I think Pip is going to crawl out from behind the desk and take another peek out the the back direction. Just like <laughs> lift the tent up just a little bit to see out there. Amazingly, uh, what used to be a view into the rest of the military camp and further up ahead where these metal bars are being laid down for the construction of this railway you've been told about. Uh, all of that is gone, hidden behind a wall of metal, uh, black for the most part, but with speckles here and there still of glimmering brass. Um, it, it seems just like this massive... Uh, round wall around you, um, immobile for a few seconds as you stare at it, tall enough that you wouldn't be able to climb over it, and then you see it just sort of like twitch and reposition itself, just a few uh, inches, but you definitely saw it move. Uh, okay. Uh, is there any sign of, are there still gnomes in the back, or have they been like, like, hidden behind this yeah, you, immense you metal. don't see it yeah you don't see anything beyond uh, uh beyond this wall uh and no gnomes are between you and it okay pip's going to try and sneak out the back okay um <laughs> uh, outside here. Uh, the only person who can understand this is now Pontifex, who has, who is now capable. It's comprehend languages, right? You can understand any language right. you hear. Um, right, I can understand it. I can't speak it, but I can understand it. And I think we've established I can understand Plurnant languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, so Pontifex is the one who is capable of understanding what Zarka is, Zarka is saying when she turns uh, uh, to her left and addresses some of the gnomes nearby. Uh, she's calling out for two names. She says, where are Garba and Bilwin? I'm going to need both of them to come with me. And uh, um, quickly, um, Two gnomes step ahead, and you recognize uh, the two that were guarding the tent uh, and with whom the whole, uh, the whole accident took place. Uh, they step up. They don't come like too close to her. They keep like a good ten feet of distance from her. But they, um, 
both of the uh, neither of them is holding their rifle anymore and they just uh stand at attention and then they like glance at the rest of your group very briefly but then they from they just keep their eyes uh, on her um you said their names were garba and bilwin garba and bilwin here you go perfect thanks uh pip with the tent being having collapsed uh you can like look back and see the rest of the group over it uh are you trying to be out of view like staying low as low as you can, or are you try oh. definitely trying to stay low and okay. and because you'd have to be right as now? low as the <laughs> highest furniture that was in the tent, which is like yeah. basically just laying all the way down. Mm hmm. Pip is like trying to see if there's any sort of like crevice or opening. And Pip still looks like a gnome right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he's trying to find like an opening into this. Anywhere out of it, actually. Right. Well, now that he can, like, he's all the way out and he can sort of look around behind him, uh, he comes to realize that this metal wall he was seeing around him is the tail of the dragon that lives in this colony and it's wrapped all the way around you. Uh, and the only... It, it, it's perfectly adhering to the ground, so the only direction where he can actually see out of it uh, is forward where the rest of the group is standing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh. Hmm. This. This is a predicament. Pip will stand up and turn towards the others and uh, try and walk as confidently as possible in that direction, being a, a gnome. Okay. Uh, to, look, to try to look confident, uh, I think I'm going to call a pick between deception or performance. All right. Let's do performance. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so for the rest of you, um, you basically see this uh, um, gnome at some point show up next to Pontifex and Tekka. Um, yeah, that is that is beyond. Uh, that is beneath everybody's per uh, passive perception, uh, except Pips. <laughs> Rebecca. Um, so all of you just see uh, this gnome show up from uh, behind you and to your right, uh, um, looking quite scared, like he was obviously out of place with, without uh, all the other ones outside of the dragon's protection instead of like within the circle. Um, and he's sort of like scrambling to his feet and trying to get past you. And we've seen Pip do this trick before. Mm -hmm. Whenever we first came into the camp. Uh, Is just... this gnome uh, posed as though he was holding something in his hands towards his chest? Easy. <laughs> 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 uh, a serious question. I mean, Pip can keep his doll like in his in 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 other places. Uh, sure, but, but would he in this moment? Probably. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh... Alex will just kind of glance at this strange gnome and kind of like look back confused for a second at where the dragon's tail is like how and then like kind of it clicks and he then just kind of gestures the like waves his hand in front of his neck like don't do it does Pip just run past the group or I think he's a bit frozen in fear at the moment now just stuck where he is. Yeah. Just, just, it's okay. We're all okay.
Well, still stays in there. Okay. Yeah, that was just okay. I wasn't sure if I was it's, waiting for people it's to do like you it's like you're looking at a deer caught in the headlights. <laughs> just standing stock still, um looking between you and Zarkus and and also above to the immense metal dragon above him. Yeah, having stepped forward a little bit, Pepe can now like see the rest of him beyond just the belly, and there's his neck just stretching out for feet and feet above you. Uh, the head is just looking so far away from you. Uh, one of its, just one of its eyes is basically as big as you are. Uh, you can feel its, his breathing just through his body. Um, raspy and deep and slow with uh, uh, this gnome having uh, uh, seemingly emerged from the back uh, um, and uh, Talix quickly addressing him uh, in a whisper is he trying to like not be heard by Zarkas? yeah <laughs> if okay, possible just, yeah yeah like he, he came by and you just like hushedly told him that like everything is fine you you guys are safe um and then roll me just a stealth roll for for me real quick uh do it j the is for whispering just just do it with advantage not right. particularly difficult to whisper um it's more about everyone is professional Everyone is proficient in whispering. Yes. 16. <laughs> Everyone is proficient in whispering. <laughs> Not me. I've been told I'm a bad whisperer. Yeah, I was about to say I would like to oppose. I have had many <laughs> kids at work that don't know how to whisper. <laughs> <laughs> or try to sell me for dub, one of the two. <laughs> well, Talix is actually proficient in whispering, so it's all right. Well, are you serious? What? No, ah, just no. The, the, don't mind me. <laughs> My dice. <laughs> um. You're the DM. We can't not mind you. <laughs> Everything you say carries a lot of weight in these situations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I should. Oh, I rolled a fox. I no, mean. I mean. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that loud. Um. Hey, you see, just Zark is like gesturing at you. And speaking in a language you don't understand, Pontifex understand her uh, calling at him and saying, with me. <coughs> um, um, the perimeter is clear. <laughs> you say that in common. Yeah. Certainly. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think that is enough. Hey, hey. Uh, hmm. Hold on. Um. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. Um. As Pip speaks and like he, his whisper is so like low that you guys barely heard it, and like Zarkus visibly just struggled to to understand what he said. Um, you see, you, you feel the ground shake a little bit as the dragon sort of like shifts up his position just slightly, um, moves. A, an enormous uh, uh, leg, a little bit. Uh, it's his front right leg, and he moves it just a little bit further to the left, kind of like getting it uh, uh, in front of you over here. Um, and you hear this voice coming from, uh, from above you, immense. You can hear it just like reverberating inside of his own body that surrounds you as the dragon says, this one is with them. Pip pees himself. <laughs> Pontifex also pees himself. 
I guess even Brook pees himself. This yellow circle is now a circle of pee. <laughs> oh, like Isaac. Um, yeah. uh, what language? Common. Okay. Why? You're not. It's not common. You are the one who said it's not common. <laughs> I keep saying common. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, Plurinan. <laughs> It's my bad. My bad. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um. Sarabath uh, turns it's... back to like a glance at a group, uh, but the reaction is a lot more mild than you expected. Uh, Zorka just says like a little bad with the head again and says, um, uh, mm, she says, I understand your radiance. And then she just like gestures back towards Vera. Um, and uh, says, Shall we go elsewhere for this conversation? Would that yes, please. put you more at ease? Uh, yes, yes, we're ready to go. Right, everyone? Please. Alex is looking back up at the dragon. Uh, after a few seconds, you feel the ground shake again as the dragon again shifts a little bit his position and the the, uh, the leg goes back uh, to where it was before and you feel his voice again saying You are invited in my home. I love this. The uh, the dragon straightens up his, his position a little bit, and then whoosh, the wind nearly knocking off your feet uh, as as the dragon lifts up into the air, and seconds later it's back into the wooden nest. Zarkas and Sarabath are both sort of like taking a step aside. And uh, Zark is being the one that gestures towards the nest and says, Shall we? Talix is like standing there at Slack Chad for a couple seconds. <laughs> but, uh, but eventually he'll respond. Oh, oh um, yes. Everyone? Take the lead. All right, let's go. Okay. Professor, are you okay? I'm fine. This uh, Lady Sarabeth seems to be uh, the helpful sort. She's uh, one of us. Oh, yes. Uh... Yes, that's true. Oh, good to have friends. All right. I was just going to make sure everyone's like on their way before heading it, forward. It takes Pip a while. He's still like absolutely shaking head to toe. And when he does follow, it's from a little bit of a distance. Talos is going to try to give him a comforting smile, but it's like very obviously still panicking <laughs> himself, so it's... Does Pip uh, maintain the disguise? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That adds up. Does anyone say anything about it? I'll let him do his thing. I think that sums it up. Let him do his thing. Okay. It's just a pace. Zorkas is the one that leads the group. She is immediately followed by the other two gnomes. Uh, while... Th and then there is like a bit of space. And then Sarabeth uh, is the one actually like next to... Uh, uh, like right in front of you. Um, 
making sure that all of you are coming with. She she waits for a moment when she sees uh, that the uh, the gnome in the back is hesitating, and she just like she just stands there until he starts to move too. Um, and as you're beginning to walk, she leans uh, a little bit towards uh, Pip and says, "I can see through you." Pip flinches and just doesn't even meet her 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 eyes, but just I think just stops in his tracks when when she does say that and waits for like for her to say something else. It's uh, mm, yeah. Well, Alex will kind of like go over and walk by Pip's side and just make sure everything's cool. Um, she. Mm, how do I put this? Um, to Pip, this is a little bit of a scary woman. Uh, she looks strong and she doesn't really make much of an effort to smile at him or to sound nice. Uh, so, like, the vibe he's getting would not be a good one, but at least the tone of her voice is, um, so normal. Uh, she doesn't sound angry uh, as she uh, keeps talking to him and says I would recommend that you abandon your appearance Pip gives like a, a slight double nod and then uh, the illusion fades away that will be much better good job oh, she's right <laughs> Eyes still locked to the ground, Pip just enters into his trudging step <laughs> forward. <laughs> um, unfortunately for for him, uh, um, the woman doesn't seem done talking to him, uh, and instead she she asks, "Was that your magic, or did the others put it on you?" Mm. You know, we have a, a practiced arcane user who would love to regale you with the stories of his magics uh, right over there, if you want to talk to him. Please, he's... this one's very young. Um, addressing Talus with, like, a bit more of a, of a firmer tone, um, or is just a little bit more loud when speaking to him as she straighters her back and addresses him. Uh, Serabeth says, Why, that is exactly what is so fascinating with this one. The age. Um, How young he is. Um, I'm hoping that we can set him on a good path, you see. <laughs> he's... He's very talented. Uh, is Pip wearing the symbol of the fox that he received from the cleric uh, in Cleon? He is. Okay. I figured as much, just wanted to, to be, like, certain. Uh, so she just continues uh, speaking to Talix and says, For somebody so young to wield divine magic like this so freely, it is impressive. You were the ones who taught him? Or that man? Gesturing uh. also towards Pontifex. <laughs> Well, we all wish to teach him what we know, but uh, he seems to be very naturally gifted on his own. Whose child is he? Talix will look to Pip. Uh, well, we don't know everything uh, about his heritage. She raises an eyebrow at this, um, casts another curious look at Pip, and then addresses, addresses Talix again. Um, hmm. Is he in need of help? Mm -mm. <laughs> Was that a, a, a positive? <laughs> mm -hmm, or a. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, we try to help him how we can. If he needs to be brought back home, I could arrange for it. 
Mm-mm. He has a grandmother here. Uh, we haven't met her yet, but he's... He seeks to help her. Uh, maybe once we sort out his business here, we can take him to see the tree someday. You're almost at the wooden nest as uh, um, Nick, you're basically taking the, this, uh, this left turn into it uh, as uh, uh, Cerebeth just finishes the conversation by saying, uh, well, uh, if you are at any point in need of assistance, if he needs to be brought back to his grandmother, or if he needs passage to Plurna, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. That's most kind of you. Thank you. Well, of course. Somebody like him. Surely the gods are going to take good care of him. Alex will slap Pip on the back. Yep, that's uh, that's for sure. <laughs> oh boy, Pip, look at where we're going to see the dragon. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, are any of the others having a uh, any conversation while going up to to the nest? Speak mm, I don't think so. spoken to. No more. Who's that addressed to? The group? Mm. Okay. Razil Kamir's nest uh, is the largest building any of you have ever seen, and it's also the, straight, the most uh, strangely uh, assembled, as uh, there's only a few areas that actually have a rooftop, and those areas are massive and <laughs> pretty ruined. <laughs> Um, they offer shade and protection from the rain, and it's also where some amounts of, uh, let's call it furniture, actually are placed, uh, uh, where they are protected from the elements. But even then, there is no, um, there isn't a wall that separates the enclosed area, the covered area, from the rest of it. And most of it is exposed uh, uh, to the sunlight. Um, and that's, you, you, you never do approach the part with a rooftop, so you're going to be just a, in constant uh, uh, direct sunlight as you step in. And for the dragon, this is almost small for somebody as big as he is, but for you it just takes you so long to actually navigate uh, through it, to actually step from uh, uh, the entrance all the way to where the dragon is. Um, as you're, as you're coming in, uh, there is uh, a man running towards you. Um, none of you have seen him before. He's a... Um, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, uh, he actually has... Uh, uh, you can see that he has slightly pointed ears, but not as pointed as elves do. And one of them is actually chipped, uh, so like part of the ear is missing. Uh, but even with that, uh, um, that that trait is sufficient to like make him uh, clearly be a half uh, uh, elf. Uh, he has black hair. It's it's curly and kind of long, almost reaching down to his shoulders. And the way he's running up towards you um, is almost... Uh, mm, there's almost like an anger to him as he rushes uh, towards you, although it's not quite clear why. He just like waves at his arms, and now that he's gotten a lot closer, um, you can see that he also has this large scar going down his right cheek from like the base of the eye all the way down to his chin. Uh, and he's, as he's waving his arms very widely, basically flailing them, uh, trying to get the, uh, your attention, he just shouts and it's not quite clear if he's talking to you or to, to Sarabeth or to Zarkas as he yells, What is the meaning of this? Why? What's happening? Somebody explain to me what is going on. You! She points to Sarabeth. Talk to me! 
Uh, she just keeps this uh, uh, discomposure to her as she almost like dismisses him, just does his uh, gesture uh, towards him and uh, says, we are going to, it's all good. Nobody's go going to hurt your precious dragon. He, he, he mutters to himself uh, for a bit more as he uh, pretty much just turns back and heads back in uh, in the direction where the dragon is currently uh, just curled up and uh, Sarah Beth just turns uh, towards it and uh, the person still being next to him is Talix and Pippi is on the other side of her um, and she addresses Talix as she shakes her head and says don't mind him uh, what is his position here? He is uh, Ral Zirgamir's uh, assistant. He's just very protective of his radiance, so <sighs> he's harmless. Hmm. Um, you all move forward until you're uh, pretty much in front uh, of this dragon and even if he's lying down uh, in this sort of like curled up position with his tail going all the way around him uh, he's still just incredibly large um, towering over all of you he, his eyes are locked on you as you approach uh, standing between you and him is uh, the half elf um who stands with his arms crossed, almost like daring you to um, to get past him. Zarka stops uh, just a few feet from him and the two gnomes following her <clears throat> step aside um, at attention. And uh, Sarabeth just gestures uh, like at uh, the alpha elf and, uh, and says, perhaps some chairs? For our guests. And he... He grumbles to himself, but then he does take off. Uh, and uh, you're not going to see him for a little bit. Uh, so for the time being, you're still standing. Uh, as uh, uh, Zarkas is going to speak to you. And she'll say... Perhaps Lady Sarabeth would like to mediate this exchange. To avoid any further incidents. And Sarabeth steps up and dresses the five of you and says, Who would like to give your version of the events first? Uh, it might be best if we have the first word. I say to the others, to the, to the rest of the group. May I speak? Alex thinks on it for a sec. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> Please, go right ahead. First, on behalf of the group, we thank you for halting violence and letting my friend, recover. Second, make it known that I alone disarmed and harmed one of your people, and I alone should make amends for it. Sarabeth None of oh, my go ahead. companions are responsible for that. Okay. Um, Sarabeth, instead of like addressing Eka, she speaks to the rest of your group and says, Can you confirm? Uh -huh. I think Brooke fakes his head. 
Um, I mean, he might want to take all the blame on him while he was the first to act. <clears throat> None of us in the room acted appropriately, so we're kind of all a bit at fault. Not doing what you're doing right now, mediating the situation a bit better. Uh. <laughs> I personally would like to hear from uh, Garba and Billwin. I believe their names were. I would especially like to hear the account of the one who deemed it appropriate to shoot me. Um, he begins to speak in Gnomish, in Gnomish which like you understand, but uh, Zargos actually halts him and says... Implernan. And um, he like, stumbles on his words a little bit. Uh, um, and then he says, I. He was going to cast magic. He. he that, that one, the blue one, was attempting to cast magic. Professor, perhaps you should explain the nature of your spell. Before delving into the nuances, you, uh, whichever one was talking, and I think he even, like, shifts his gaze to, uh, to the leader, uh, I keep forgetting the name, Zarkas. Mm -hmm, Zarkas. Deem it appropriate to use these powerful weapons of yours upon anyone who dares use magic. <laughs> Something so commonplace an entire region and category of species are known to be born with it innately. Not an armed opponent, not a threatening braggart, but an old man. That Those is what you us. deem the use of these weapons for. Those of us who are born innately with magic know of its incredible powers. And we know that those of us who pursue its uh, powers, the longer they spend learning of it, the more powerful they become. The older someone is, the stronger their magic could be. It is a weapon, just like the ones we wield. So you sought to invoke the wrath of someone who you deemed such a powerful user of such a dangerous force? Your soldiers will fire a single round into one, one who could raise an entire town to the dust, according to this. They Someone who is so orders. adept at its use that it will waste their time bringing a gift to you. They have followed my orders to the letter. For this, I do not. Uh, they shall not be reprimanded. So your issue then lies with our laws, in which case I shall speak for them. You are correct. My issue lies with you and your laws, and a disregard for them. Within Vera's territory, we respect the law of his radiance. Although under our lands. Within our lands, you would have been shot to the head rather than the leg. We are bound to our contract with this radiance, and you were not to be killed. Our agreement with this radiance has been upheld. I fear for his company. Uh, you see the uh, one of the two gnomes, uh, uh, the one who uh, is the one who actually pulled the trigger on you, sort of like um, tense up a little, like he like he took it personally. Uh, but you see the other one sort of like just very lightly hit him uh, with the uh, with his elbow, uh, and they both just go back to their uh, to their position. 
Uh, it's at this point that the half elf finally returns with uh, an assortment of chairs, um, having to like unable to lift all of them. He's just like dragging along on the ground and uh, positions them in front of you. And there is four of them, and then he goes back to get more. Um, sorry, Beth. Just gestures for for your group to sit down. Take and remain standing. Talix will pull a chair up to the professor and gesture. Yeah, Brooke also sits down. I think he's uh, he's staring daggers at these gnomes and then <laughs> kind of cranes himself down into the chair. Hip sets. Um. Okay, then Zarkus speaks up again and says, "As for the." return of the weapon I have been told that you your group, the five of you have uh, reached our, uh, have reached his radiance's colony before the, th the theft occurred, meaning that you had nothing to do with its disappearance so that part of your story I was able to verify, as for the rest I was interrupted, so I haven't finished uh, confirming. Either way, I suppose I, since I never finished, I never had a chance to thank you for returning it, so you have our thanks. I believe we have received enough of your thanks for the day. She looks like she's about to add something, but she holds back. And there's a few seconds of silence, um, and Sarah Beth sort of like holds up a hand and says, um, oh god, where is it? Here it is. So if I understand correctly, you have returned the missing weapon to the gnomes, and everything that followed was as a consequence of it? Uh, that is correct. Then is the matter resolved? And I Zarkas suppose. Is just, yeah, and Zarkas, like, after a moment, after watching for your reactions, as she nods and says, As far as I am concerned, they are free to go. We would. <laughs> normally pay for that man's rest at a local doctor, but well, you know the situation. Um, Alright. Should we leave some? The half elf arrives with the other chairs <laughs> as Brooke says, Sh shall we leave? And he just says, oh, God damn it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Alex is just looking at Sarabeth and Ralz here. Um, hmm. Sarabeth sort of like, um, she gestures uh, towards uh, the exit of the nest uh, and says, uh, Would it put you at ease uh, to. Uh, for me to issue an order for gnomes to step nowhere near you for your stay in there? Um, I, I don't know if that's necessary. I think if we could just move on. Then moving I mean, on we shall. I will be... I will be looking further into this. I will be conducting my own investigation, but... You're not going to be bound to the walls of there while that happens. You're free to go. I believe that I still have an appointment with Ozir Gamir. Um, <clears throat> the one that was approved. The dragon turns his head towards the half elf, uh, uh, who is still like, who is now picking up the chairs to take them away. Um, 
And the moment they make eye contact, uh, the half elf drops everything he's doing and he, and he produces this little uh, notebook and he goes through the pages and checks and says, Ah, yes, tomorrow. Um, Pontifex Vastalus. Dal Am I saying it right? We're close enough. I'll. Enoch? That is correct. And the Enoch's? And the uh, the dragon just slowly turns his head towards uh, the rest of you guys, um, not saying anything. Um, if it's not too brash, might I ask a question to his radiance? It's not <laughs> it's not related to the case. Just one question. By the, any chance, have you... The Half-Elf no. actually tries uh, to, to, to stop you and says, uh, um, His Radiance's time is very precious. Uh, but Raziel Gamir himself just uh, um, like breathes really heavily, sort of like a grunt. Uh, and the Half-Elf just uh, like sort of like shuts up before he finishes the sentence. And he says, You have permission to speak. Uh, have you met with an elf by the name of Aaron Moore here? <clears throat> um, once more the dragon turns towards the half elf, and the half elf pulls at another book, um, <laughs> and goes through it real, real quickly, and he says. No such name in my notes. And then the dragon also uh, turns towards Utalix and you can like smell the um, sort of like this this burning uh, like charcoal like smell as uh, it speaks and uh, and facing you uh, this time is that being like facing you instead of directly above you and he says the name brings nothing to my I see. <laughs> okay. I think we could all use a rest. Sarah Beth says, You're free to go. The rest of us are going to have a conversation. Oh. Everyone? Uh. One thing, if I may have uh, a few more seconds of your time. Hmm? You, your name. She addresses Tekka. My name is Tekka. Has anyone given you any trouble in Vera? I think the professor audibly scoffs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is the greatest trouble I've had here. I hope it does not repeat itself. If anyone has an issue with you in particular, do feel free to report it. It is against our laws. Report it to who? To me. Is Lady Sarabeth saying that? Yeah. Hmm. And how does one report something directly to you? Until this moment, I was not aware of your existence. Oh, uh... She, she's the cleric at the church. If oh. you do not find me at the temple, report <laughs> it to any guard. They answer to me. Any non stazilian guard. I understand. You are appreciated. Then we will continue. You're free to go. And 
and she grabs one of the chairs that the half elf was about to take away, and she'll say, ah, I'll be needing this. I believe we perhaps have differing definitions of the word free. <laughs> All the same. In the same way that uh, Pontifex was staring daggers at the gnomes before, Pip is now staring at Pontifex. Just glaring. Yeah, he's... <laughs> he's old man standing up, like, hand on his knees to write himself. <laughs> and then, like, even shouldering past people if he has to, to leave the room. Okay. And it takes like a good five minutes just to walk all the way out uh, of the wooden nest. Um, but you are left alone. Everybody else, Sarabeth, the three gnomes, the half-elf, and uh, the dragon just staying back. Um, you have like this sense um, like something remained unspoken. Like the situation got cleared perhaps a little bit too quick. Perhaps a little bit too easily. Uh, but you are back, uh, you are back in Vera with, uh, um, a, with quite a scare, but ultimately nothing than, um, what's probably going to become a nasty scar on your knee, Pontifex. Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to do? Um, I think actually, as he was uh, as he was leaving, uh, I think he says to Talix, I guess, as he goes past him in like a lower voice, and says, "I need the day to myself. I will meet you all at the tavern at night." And uh, he is leaving and heading for the river. I'm sorry, Professor. Okay. Uh, the rest of you see Pontifex just walk away towards the western side of the colony. I know we all had plans for the day, uh, but... Well, how's everyone feeling? We are all still held by fear. We should find rest in the tavern. This is no state to investigate. I agree. I agree. I Let's rest and then potentially talk about what happened. Pip, are you okay? Uh, looking towards Pip, he's still looking down towards the ground, and you can see his face is just contorted in a really angry expression. Oh, let's all get some rest and some food. The four of you minus Pontifex return to the Super Eyes. Uh, mere hours after you woke up. You woke up late into the day because of how uh, late you stayed at night hunting down a wolf. And uh, uh, just mere, mere hours after that, you're already back and you're already feeling like you've gone through an entire day's worth of just stress. Um, it feels like it's been two weeks. It feels <laughs> like it's been two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um... How about we take a 10 minute break here? Ah! And ah! No. Is that okay? Is that okay? No! Sure. <laughs> we Wait, can before we do, we need to get to the part where you say, and then surrounding the tavern is an army of 100 gnomes and mechs. <laughs> and mechanical birds. All atop giant mechanical birds. <laughs> They're riding them. Mechadactyls. <laughs> oh no. Okay. The birds um. also have guns. 
<laughs> Just a mm. barrel peeking out of their beaks. <laughs> and the guns. Okay. Shoot gnomes with guns. <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> guns that shoot out gnomes with more guns. <laughs> Hmm. There is a paradox in there somewhere, but I do not wish to find it. And the gnomes guns we got more mechanical birds. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, continues. 10 minute break, I'll see you in just a little bit. And we are back! Hello! Hey! Hello? Hi! Hi. Hello! We have returned to play D&D once again! Nice. Yeah. We're going to be uh, checking with the majority of the party first, uh, and then we're also going to see what uh, uh, Pontifex is up to. Uh, but four of you are returning to the surprise. Um, you just sort of like shake away all the stress and anxiety from what just uh, uh, transpired. Um, when you walk in, the... Uh, a halfling greets you, although it is not the woman um, that uh, uh, that you've seen previously. But um, oh no! Hold on a second. Oh no! Sorry. Um, just the woman is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. I just, yeah, I just saw my notes and it's like, oh, there's been a murder in here, okay. <laughs> and we get framed for the murder. <laughs> I, I, just, I just have this murder plot now that we're going to deal with. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, you just, um, you're greeted by a halfling man this time, um, who just from like behind the counter on the elevated portion of it, uh, um, waves at you, but then goes right back to, uh, to cleaning. You're free to either go to your room or sit at a table. What would the group like to do? I am heading to the room. If you need food, then take this moment. <clears throat> I think... Uh... I think, well, the, yeah, what, what is everyone else doing? Pip is just sulking. What time is it? Like 2 p.m. Hmm. Let's go for a beverage. Some nice, I don't know. Not too hard alcoholic, like a beer. Oh. Rook is uh, getting a beer. Pip is sulking. Tech is going to the room. I'm missing Talix, I think. Talix is going. I think Talix is going to go to the room and try to start writing a letter to Boovin. Okay. Oh. Is this something you want to tell us about now, or...? Um... No, because I haven't even decided exactly <laughs> what it's going to yeah. be. Yeah, alright, so yeah, Talix is going to be writing a letter. Um, is Tekka doing anything in particular in the room? Uh, I think Tekka is just sort of like venting frustration by like practicing like staff techniques. Okay. Just like asserting energy, and... If he sees Talix not being too busy writing the letter... Uh, he might speak, but it really depends on how busy Oh yeah, if, if you approach him, Talix, Talix will be happy to speak. Yeah, Talix is like sitting down and writing the letter, and every once in a while there's like a swing of the quarter staff just over his head. Uh... <laughs> <sighs> this can happen again, Talix. <sighs> You're the saying we should be ready. <laughs> moment, we will not be allowed to walk on our own unless instructed. We need to be done with our business and leave.
It wasn't very cordial of them, was it? And... She... This... Radiance... She may... Have gained your trust. But we should not report anything to her. Is there something you want to keep from the church? She benefits from playing all sides. We cannot trust her intent. You mean... Well... What do you mean? The gnomes and... Who's the other side? Us? <laughs> giving her information is giving them a weapon. The gnomes? Not only. the church then I don't know I have a bad feeling that no one here has our back when things go wrong is that how you're used to things going hmm. there's something with this place. Maybe the birds are part of it. There is something lingering that will not leave. Tekka, you're not used to staying in colonies like this, are you? Mm. The places I am familiar with, they were not like this. Are you familiar with feeling unsafe? forever you go? Well, I'd like to say yes. Uh, something like it, but probably not to the extent that you've had to feel. I'm, I'm sorry for how people have reacted to you. I, I wish I could help you more, but I don't always know what to do in those situations. None of us do. We don't hold the power. So, I say we finish what we have promised, what we know about, and then we go. Okay, you're right, this... This place clearly isn't very friendly, and, uh, well... I got the only piece of, or... Well, the only piece of information I cared about, or rather I learned that I can't get it here. So... I'd also like to move on and continue on with my own mission. So yes, let's help how we can, and then move on. I agree. Will the rest of us cope? I worry for Pontifex and Pip. Me too. 
Pip. He must have been so terrified. We all were. That's true, but, you know, when you're young, being put in a situation like that. I know. I know. It'd be nice if we could all feel a little more safe wherever we go, but maybe that's never going to happen. I don't know about you, Talix. I feel safer on the road than standing still. In some ways, I agree with you. It's nice to be in control of your own destiny. But it's dangerous out there, too. True. We have to walk a dangerous path once we get to the west of the west of of the peninsula. Going into uncharted territory. Well, that's the whole reason I wanted Jamiel in the first place. I thought he might be able to be our guide, but clearly he doesn't remember anything. So I was kind of thinking maybe we could find someone else. Or at least get a Jamil have assistants. Students. Well, that's an idea. Of course, most people he knew is probably well, the rest of those skeletons and that, uh, that strange Ludarian we met. Really, we can't trust him, so... But yeah, that could be something to look into. There is someone else I know of, but... Well, apparently he's never been through here. He definitely would have met the dragon, had he been. Family? My father, yes. He's somewhere in Ladaria, but... I haven't heard anything from him in a long time. He's a very, very intelligent man. Maybe even more so than the professor. Don't tell him I said that. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Your father... What was his last location, you know? Well... I mean, the only thing I would have I know was that he almost certainly came through... that colony. Simlilon? Simli- Please pronounce it for me, Hunter. <laughs> Simlilon. Simlilon. Through the colony, simply alone. <laughs> it That's... is not a place I know. It's not too far from here. It's <clears throat> well through the way I want to go. Uh, it's just one colony past the neighboring one to the west. It's almost straight west from here. It's uh, it's an elvish place. Honestly, I'm not sure how it'll be for you, but uh, they at least are not at all superstitious about Ladarian magic. So any place feels better than this. Well, I can't blame you for thinking that. It's a shame, I. I always kind of liked Campbell, or at least the idea of it. The dragon seemed nice, I think. A tremendous presence. For sure. Oh, I should have heard about that to Boobin. 
wonder if he's ever met the dragons. Boovan seems curious. Would not surprise me. I uh, wonder if he can speak their language. Is a uh, Talik scream back to his letter? I think so. Uh, Taka, uh, one, just one last thing. Um, I, I, I think I've already said this, but uh, I just want to remind you: we have each other's backs wherever we go. So maybe we're not totally alone and unsafe. You know? You are correct. <laughs> well. Okay. Thank you for talking with me. Thank you for speaking, ending the violence. It was Downstairs. pretty scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, go Sorry. On. We're, we're, yeah, um, I'm, I'm done. Okay. Mm. Uh, Downstairs, Brooke and uh, uh, Pip. Anything in particular you're doing? Is Pip ever gonna sit along? Or is he just standing? I was thinking that uh, if there was ever a moment where Brooke was looking away or ordering a drink or something, Pip would slip out. All right. I try so not to be seen. At some, at yeah, and at some point, Brooke would look up and notice that Pip isn't even in the room anymore. Hmm. Out of curiosity, can I use? Uh, <clears throat> the detect magic thing. What do you mean with yeah. the detect magic thing? Uh, one second, I need to find it. Pretty sure it's like a fair Your thing. racial trait? Yeah. Where do I find it? It's been so long. <laughs> uh, you can cast detect magic and uh, this once per short rest. Yeah, yeah. Sad. Go right ahead. Um, nothing within the tavern within 30 feet of you is magical. Then I would probably take the beer and head upstairs. Okay. Knock on the door. Uh, Pip is gone. Should we go looking for him? B Brooke, what do you mean, gone? He disappeared. Oh, dear. Okay, uh, well. Uh, let's check the river again. Right? Right. There's no need to panic. I'll also just put his stuff away and... run out. Mm -hmm. What was Pontifex doing at the river in the meanwhile? Um, this... Uh, sorry, the river's on the west side of town, right? Mm-hmm. So, going north or south on the river, does it, is there a bend within sight? Uh, the closest bend is to the north. So if you go uh, just like that is where a little going. bit, yeah, if you, if you keep going for um, about an hour, you'd be able to yeah. like reach this bend that goes to the west. Even better, if it's like an hour outside of town, even better. That's, that's where he went, he is... Uh, followed the river to the bend um, and is like sitting on the ground uh, like on the bank of the river on the inside of the bend uh, 
and I think he's just sat. Uh, I don't think he has the physical ability to sit cross-legged, but the closest <laughs> thing that he can get to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think he's just holding that gold orb thing of his in his hands, and uh, he's just kind of meditating. Okay. Um, anything I... Like, is that it? Can I go back to the others, or will there be something yeah, yeah. that I need to be doing? No, know? he's just... He's outside of civilization... Uh, at the bend of a river, meditating on the bank of it for probably the remainder of the day. Okay. What about Pip? Uh, after Pip stepped outside, he um, starts walking towards the river and um, begins to go across the bridge. And as he's going across, he uh, he puts the the shawl, the green shawl, uh, up further. Uh, across his face so that it covers his mouth and he makes sure it's it's really tight and um, he's going to go visit Fortis and Alien hmm. okay so you're also like after crossing the river you're also going north but um, nowhere near the distance that uh, uh, unbeknownst to you uh, Pontifex has also walked. You just follow the river for a few minutes and then you uh, you leave it and you head uh, for that farm. And actually, um, Portus will be the first person that you see um, busy carrying some equipment uh, into uh, the into the building that you saw just the previous uh, uh, evening. Um, seeing him, uh, he looks to be doing just fine. Like, besides the nasty uh, scars that run up his uh, forearm, um, he doesn't seem... He doesn't look like he was attacked by a wolf just the night before. Um, he catches uh, uh, he, your uh, your look, uh, and he, uh, he smiles, he puts down what he's holding, and he waves. Pip hesitates a little bit, but then waves back. Um, then he waits for a moment and he just, like, starts coming towards you. Pip! Uh, hi! Uh, it's not dinner time yet. We're not... The food is not ready. Um, hi, hi, Fortis. I know it's not dinner time yet. Um, uh, I can, I can leave and come back later. Um. Well, uh, no, you you don't have to uh, to leave. Um, Mom is not home, but uh, we're here. I can't, <laughs> I can't make you um, food, but I mean, come in. Well, uh, I, I I could get you some water, tea. Do you like tea? Um. I don't know. Maybe. I'll well, try it. Since mom isn't home, we could even get you some watered down beer. Gillian likes that. I didn't when I was his age, but uh. Uh, come uh, in. Come on. Yeah, sure. Uh, he he's going to like drag the things he he was carrying uh, into the building and let you in, and then he just like he he goes somewhere in the back and he like. Uh, leans out of a window and just uh, yells, "Alien, come back!" Um, and then he he um, the house is currently uh, it's a little different from how it was yesterday. It seems that like some. Uh, uh, some furniture is being rearranged. There are more chairs now around the table where before there were only uh, four. Um, and you see from some brooms and buckets uh, uh, lying around, it seems like they're in the middle of cleaning. Um, uh, Fortis approaches uh, one side of uh, the kitchen and... Uh, uh, he says, okay, uh, it is your chance. Do you want to try watered down beer? Uh, does it have to be watered down? You know what? No, it doesn't. But uh, I would recommend it. 
Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. And uh, Wally is uh, pouring uh, uh, some drinks uh, for for the three of you. Uh, Ilin comes back and he's like. He's sweaty, there's dirt all over him, and he uh, looked kind of annoyed when he walked in, but the moment he sees you here, like, he just beams uh, his mouth and says, Pip, uh, you're early. Dinner is not ready. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you not know what time it is? No, I... I, I know I... Just had a really bad day is all. Um, oh, well, you did. What happened? Uh, where are the others? And like he he climbs onto one of the chairs and just sits down. Well, we returned the gun for you. Oh, how did that go? I I wish that we had taken your advice and just left it there, but. We delivered it in person, and, well, everything just went wrong, and we got in trouble, and... <sighs> I think we'll be okay, but I don't know how much longer we can be in town. I didn't even know if we'd be able to come to dinner, so I just wanted to come say hi. You can't come to, to, din to dinner? I... I don't know. Did you make mom angry? No. Oh. <clears throat> then why can't you come? Well, if it's really bad, then we might have to leave town. Her... Is... Are the gnomes mad at you? Well, they shot one of us, so... You just hear Fortis as he's approaching with the glasses saying, Oh, shit! Yeah. Well, <laughs> the wolf survived being shot to the head, so... Uh, you, you guys were okay, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's... He's fine. Well, good. Uh, and he, like, pushes uh, uh, one of the glasses towards you and he places the other two uh, in front of himself and his brother and sits down with you. Oh, and don't tell mom I gave you this. Oh, um, yeah, no problem. And Pip takes it and uh, lowers lowers the shawl and takes a sip before putting it back up. I'd imagine that to Pip the taste is not particularly pleasant. <laughs> Although I mean, it's that's not a, it's up best. to you. <laughs> <laughs> but Pip is more or less trying to fit in. Yeah, uh, and it, it looks. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Roll an inside check. Okay. <laughs> Here it comes. Yeah. It's despite the fact that you're all drinking the same thing, and despite the fact that uh, Alien kind of looked excited to have this drink, uh, he has like a similar expression as you <laughs> when he drinks it. We all uh, hate it. it <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> the two of you do. Uh, like, you're, you're, both of you like take a sip, like kind of a smallish sip, and then put it down. Uh, but like, uh, Fortis is just drinking it. Hey, want to see something cool? Do you want to see something cool? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you first. Okay. Mine's probably better. <laughs> well, I he don't know. Out... That's actually kind of a difficult to beat our cool thing. He takes out the snow globe and gives it a little shake and lets the others take a look at it. 
Uh, you place it in the middle of the table, and uh, uh, both uh, horses and alien just uh, lean forward and a bit closer and a bit closer to get like their eyes just inches away from the globe. Uh, at first, just going ooh, with uh, Ewing being more impressed than Fortis, who seems to. Well, perhaps I've already seen something like this. Uh, but then their both of their jaws will drop as they notice that there is uh, this miniature person in the scene within the snow globe that is actively waving at them as snow falls all around her. Um, Ilian says, Okay, I take it back. Your thing is cooler. I told you. Is... Is she, like... Is she real? I mean, I think so. What Does else she would she eat? be? Does she drink? Can she... Breathe in there? That's water, right? Um... Well, well, I've seen her cleaning around the house and she did bake a pie the other day. So I guess she eats? How do you bake a pie underwater? Uh, I don't know, it's magic. Fortis says, it is probably just magic. Like, you know, she isn't real. She's like an illusion or something, right? Uh, well, I'm not so sure. I mean, can illusions wave back at you and see you? Uh, I don't know. I can't do magic. Dad used to be able to. Oh. Where's where's your dad? Oh, he's, you know, he died a while ago. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's been a long time. I don't think Ilian even remembers him, right? And he, he, he's looking a bit more dejected about this than his older brother, um, but he, he nods and says, Yeah, um, I don't. Um, well, what, what were you going to show me? Um, okay, this is really cool, but also, well, you gotta promise that you're going to believe me, okay? <laughs> okay. Because it, it, it is going to sound, uh, uh crazy, but it, it's real, I swear. Uh, uh, all right. Okay, hold on, uh, I, I, I got a drawing, and, uh, Ilian stands up and like runs uh, um, into one of the rooms uh, and leaves you in Fortis alone for just a few minutes uh, as, uh, uh, not even a few minutes, uh, uh, 30 seconds maybe, as Fortis just uh, sort of like shakes his shoulders uh, uh, and he scratches his chin and says, uh, Right. Well, for, for context, we just sort of realized that this... Um, a few hours ago, but uh, that it happened yesterday. And then Alien shows up, and he has uh, um, he has a box, and he slams it on the table. Actually, this is limit. He's very he's very careful with it. He's taking like very good care of it. He very gently puts it in the table and pushes aside uh, uh, his ale. And uh, from from the box, as he lifts up the lid, you see uh, there's a few pieces of coal and a couple of sheets of parchment. And the sheets are absolutely covered in various uh, d drawings, just sketches of people and pigs and the farm that you recognize and the bridge that goes uh, over the river and into Vera. Um, some are crossed out and then redrawn uh, just adjacent uh, uh, and many of them you can see are also unfinished but it's clear that uh, um, every inch of this parchment has been uh, has been put to good use uh, and he even flips over the sketches you can see that even in the back uh, uh, there are drawings and he points uh, at the portrait uh, of an of an elf uh, um, you see the long hair flowing over his shoulders and uh, the distinctive uh, long ears that just immediately give away um, his race and Alien sort of like excitedly taps on the drawing and says okay so I had a dream of this man uh, yesterday and the dream was in Plurna because um, 
because I could see Vakanath, right? Uh, and it was this guy. And it was weird because I never seen uh, anyone like him. And also, I never really dream of Plurina because I, I, I was too small to remember what it looks like, right? But, um... Yeah. But, okay, so that's fine. That's not the crazy part. The crazy part is that my brother also had the same dream. The... The same dream? Was it the same night? Um, Portis nods and says, Yeah, well, the same night. It's a, uh, it wasn't a normal dream, because, like, I wasn't sleeping, but it was it was uh, when you guys were there. Uh, you know, when a wolf attacked, and it was this moment when I uh, lost consciousness, and that was when I saw him. And... Uh, Apparently, it's also when the same thing that happened to Alien. And we didn't know it at the time, that we both had the same dream, but, you know, later we talked about it, and he drew it, and it's exactly like I saw him. That's... That's very interesting. <laughs> I know, right? And I, I actually simultaneously both of them, Alien also saying, I know, right? It's a cool mystery. <laughs> uh, I want to solve it one day. Yeah. I was thinking I could just draw his face, but like over and over on every paper I can get my hands on. And then I just, I'm going to put the papers everywhere. Maybe like mail them to Plurin. I think you can do that. And like see if anyone knows who he is. Um, well, do you mind if I take one? Could you draw one for me? Um, well, I, I could, it's just, I'm kind of out of paper. Oh, well, when Talix gets here, he has a lot of paper. Well, paper is, um, expensive. Can he just, I mean, is he going to let me draw on one of his? Yeah, he, he let me draw on. Okay, um, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I can draw again. Uh, I can, I can, I'm planning on drawing as, uh, as many times as it takes, and I'm going to find out who he is. So that means you gotta come tonight, right? Yeah. Okay, um. cool, cause, um, um, y usually we don't, I, I, I don't really like when there's people over, but I, I'd, I'd love to, I'd, I'd really like to see you guys again, you know? Um, yeah, uh, thanks, I don't, I don't usually get to do stuff like this, so, this has been nice. Elian takes, like, a big gulp of the beer and then just sort of, like, almost chokes on it, but, uh, swallows and tries to look cool and says, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think I'm done with mine, actually. Fortis just chuckles and moves a glass towards him. Pip takes back the snow globe and just says, um, well, thanks. I'll, I'll see you tonight if we can. Um, uh, Pip, I totally... If, if you can't, um, for any reason, can you, can you come here and let us know? You know, b before you go. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, thank you. Yeah, don't don't leave without without um saying bye. Yeah, I'll try. All right, and try to get your friends here if you can. Pip just gives them a a, a smile underneath his shawl, <laughs> um, so they can't Completely see. Completely invisible. Uh, starts to head out, and right. um, as he as he walks through the door and exits and starts walking down the way, uh, uh, Squeak just mutters in Pip's ear, "Oh, how cute! Little Pippy making friends." <laughs> it's just like, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the rest of you in search of Pip. 
Um, is there any, like, a, do we need to, like, uh, roleplay it? I... Or can we just say, like, you look around, you ask people, and, you know, eventually... Pip come, uh, y you find him at the bridge as he's coming back? I mean, he must have been gone for quite a while. Um... Yeah, probably half an hour. Oh, is it that short of a walk? The okay. farm is uh, not too far. Uh, yeah, I. Thirty minutes to forty minutes feels uh, feels right. Uh, yeah, I mean, we probably like Talix would have assumed he'd be along the river, so. It's a pun of probably still start... walking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she hasn't even made it to the bend yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, probably would have gotten there and tried to look along the shore. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what do you guys think? Is this 30 minutes panic mode, or...? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't think Brooke would panic. So we can keep searching, unless you really freak out. Hmm... I guess it's fine. Talix would have been pretty nervous, though. Mm -hmm. uh, which, I mean, you, you're you missing a child. That's uh, understandable. That would be would be a the normal reaction. Um, and yeah, you're just, you're like asking around and somebody did see Pip like cross the bridge. So you begin to just follow the river uh, up and down, uh, um, trying to trying to find where you might have gone until eventually you sort of like, as you're still searching the area you know, near the river is when you're going to see uh, Pip coming from the north uh, part of it. Uh, he's in Pekka's trap. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, yeah, approaching you towards, uh, towards the bridge. Oh, if you see your there, companions. There, there he is. Oh. Pep! Hmm? Oh, <sighs> it's not dinner yet. Oh, he... Oh, we... You're going off to the farm. Yeah, is everything okay? Do we have to leave? <sighs> Are we leaving town? No, not not yet. We can, we can go see them again. We can? Of course. I mean, everyone here is still alright with that, right? Yeah, we agree to it. Yeah. And they're inviting us. I think it's important. Technically, we just... fulfilled or finished a mission. So... a good food or dinner is due. That's true. We could all use some light in the darkness today. Did Pontifex say anything when he would come back? To any of you? He okay. said he needed to take the day. Um, so, whether he'll be back this evening or later, I'm not sure. But he should know where we're going. He should remember. All right. I think it would be a good idea to talk with the group about what happened today, especially if we plan on staying together while moving forward. Yeah. And we can wait till Pontifex is back, or rather should. Okay. Pip, uh, please let us know next time you plan on going somewhere. You worried us. I just, you know, was beginning to wonder if maybe you got kidnapped by gnomes or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're doing well. 
Did you have fun? Yeah, I'm I'm less angry now. I'm still very angry, but less angry. That's good. Well. What would the group like to do until dinner time? Are you just uh, waiting until then? Uh, I think Brooke would still sit in the bar. Yeah, it's Alex might just go back to train the rights. Okay. I guess my question is uh, next whether Pontifex will be back just in time for dinner. Or, um, he wants to return earlier? Or later? Um, how much time will have passed? Like, I don't, I don't remember what time all this stuff happened. Okay, 2 p.m. was when everybody was meeting at the tavern and Pontifex started walking. It took him about an hour to reach the bend, so it would be 3. So if he wants to be back by 6, uh, he'd get uh, a couple of hours and then he'd have to come back. No, I don't think he's, he's gonna be back before the dinner then. Uh, he is fully in I mean, he told Telex that he'd be back uh, tonight. So he plans on coming back tonight. I don't think he's just going to meditate for two hours. I think it's going to take a lot more than that. Okay. Uh, so the time for the dinner comes, uh, and uh, Pontifex has not returned to the tower. The rest uh, to the tavern. The rest of you have gathered uh, at the entrance, and you're ready to go. But it is only four of you. Well, are we going to wait a bit more, or do we just go? No, we shouldn't keep her waiting. If he shows up, he shows up. Hopefully she won't be too offended. I feel like perhaps she mostly is going to be glad you came, Tekka. After today, we should give... Pontifex the time. Yeah. Okay. If we are all prepared, we should move before it gets too dark. That's just dinner. Let's go. There's nothing to be worried about. I'm actually quite hungry. So let's hurry. Hmm. I think <laughs> Brooke will start walking. Taking the lead! <laughs> Alright! Uh, led by Brooke, uh, you find your way back uh, uh, to uh, Liana's house. Uh, where she and the alien and Fortis all live together. Um, the... There is a lantern hanging uh, uh, from the porch that uh, uh, is already lit, despite the fact that the sun is still uh, visible, just setting. Um, and uh, when you arrive, uh, um, you just uh, there's lights uh, uh, that are on inside, and you're hearing uh, footsteps and uh, things getting moved around. Um, Brook knocks a door um liana rushes to to open a door uh smiles at the rest of you she's a uh, um she's dressed a little differently uh from the last time uh, any of you saw her um slightly better clothes but not uh, overly uh formal um she just for you to come in and says Hi, um, I'm glad you came. And then she sort of like leans to the side a little bit, uh, um, looking to the left, looking to the right, past the group, and says, Um, you're missing someone? He got uh. shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, um,. He, he, he is did? recovering from an injury. 
Yes, yes, he's oh. he's going to be fine. But yeah, he he's taking the the evening to rest. Oh, uh, gods! We we heard a gunshot earlier today. That that was it was him getting. Is he okay? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be okay? Yes, yes, it's it's all fine. Oh, we had his injuries tended to right away. Uh, oh, you did. Um, we don't have a doctor in town, right? Oh, uh, it was crap. Sarabeth. Lady Sarabeth. Okay, it was Lady Sarabeth. She uh, she treated him. Um, right, our, our priestess. Um, okay, yeah, good. Um, good, good. He's he's in good hands. Um, yes. Um, oh. Here, uh, uh, please, uh, uh, come in. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. We did not dress for the occasion. Oh, you did not have to uh, dress in, in any way. I'm just... I am just glad... I'm just glad that. And then, um... As you're uh, beginning to sort of, like, walk in, uh, um... When, when Tekka dresses her, she, she just seems... Um, a little shaky. And, uh, she begins to lean forward and gets on the floor, uh, kneeling down and she puts her forehead down on the floor uh, facing Tekka and and she says I wanted to apologize I owe you so much you saved the, the lives of my sons they told me you were the first to come to their aid and you faced that beast bravely without hesitation and I'm uh, I will forever be in your debt. I have put that aside a long time ago. It is you who must choose how to deal with the guilt. She looks back up from her kneeling position. Uh, I see her, her eyes uh, slightly wet with tears, but she's like holding them back. Uh, is this... Am I... Am I forgiven? From my side, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And she pulls herself back up and she dusts off her her legs and says uh, please sit down thank you um, last night some of you um, Talix and Pepe had already seen uh, uh, the interior of Liana's house you had already stepped onto the floor covered in braided rushes and you had already seen how this small house manages to feel pleasantly cozy uh, but tonight there's this smell of freshly baked bread that seems uh, to almost cling onto the walls and uh, seconds after you sit down into a set of uh, mismatched chairs um, that just seem to come from, from many different sets um, Fortus comes in uh, just, just moments after the door was closed behind you uh, and he's carrying with ease uh, uh, a barrel about uh, uh, over half his size and he uh, just easily sets it down near a wall um, Elin comes in shortly after him uh, waves at Pip uh, and he's just going to go in the kitchen side uh, of the house and help Liana um, finish setting the table oh um Talix Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Fortis and Alien would like to borrow a piece of paper to draw something, because they, they have a story that I think you'll find very interesting. 
Um, certainly. Here, uh... Yeah, uh, Talix will fetch paper and, uh, pen. Okay. Um, Elin comes over and he's setting down the, the, uh, the silverware, and then he notices that the paper is on the table, and his, his eyes almost seem to, to glisten when he notices, uh, and he, he, he's realizes just the amount of papers that Talix has, um, and he, uh, shyly reaches forward and says, I can have one? Well, certainly. I, I will give it right back. I'm just going to uh, draw on it. Oh, oh, okay. How expensive is paper, Talix? They said it's really expensive. <laughs> well... Uh... <laughs> it's nothing I can't part with. Pip, you don't ask people for the price of their paper. <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I could probably bear. Here, maybe I. What, what do I actually have? Uh, Just ask Boovin for more. Boovin will give you all of his worldly I possessions. I don't actually see parchment in your card or sheet. <gasps> I swear I bought some, right? Boovin gave him some, right? I'm or pretty sure you bought some too. In the in in the Cleon where we were for before. Uh, well, yeah, no, he definitely has bought some. I just don't see them in the inventory. Yeah. It's okay, because I was going to check the, the price of parchment just by looking at it in the list, but it's not there. <laughs> I also don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Well, I'll give them everything that I got from Boofin. How about that? All the paper. <laughs> uh, one Minus sheet. the one piece I need to write the letter on. One sheet is usually one silver piece, so that's, uh, that's the answer. Um... But yeah, uh, yeah, Ilian is just going to take one, um, and he like sets it on a different counter, and he finishes setting the table, and he takes the paper to his room. Um, but when uh, when dinner is served, uh, uh, his mom calls back for him, so he comes back before having actually like finished uh, uh, what he was catching. But he like as he sits down, he says, "Ah, ah I'll get it done soon uh, after dinner. Okay, I'll I'll be very fast." Certainly, it's... Take your time. You know, I was just gonna say, it's remarkable how, how helpful your sons are. I know how rough it can be. Life on the farm. We have to take care of each other. Uh, uh, have you no uh, siblings yourself? I do, actually. Uh, she's placing down uh, this platter of cheese and sausages uh, uh, as as you're talking. I do, but um, they're all back in, in Plurna. I'm the oh. only one in my family who had the, uh, the luck and the privilege of coming here. Of course. My husband was with me when that happened, but, well... Uh, at least he got to see the new continent. That's an unforgiving place. The two kids have uh, uh, quite the appetite between Elian grabbing the cheese uh, and uh, Portis going for the sausages. Uh, um, if Liana had not promptly stepped in, they could have easily cleared the entire platter, uh, platter just on their own. I will fight uh, for the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and eventually, after uh, a momentary barely avoided tussle, um, everybody has had a chance to take from the platter. And once it's empty, uh, it's immediately followed by, by a barley stew. Um, it looks like there is uh, more than... Uh, would it be needed to just feed all of you? There's an extra portion. Hmm. 
Uh, while eating, uh, Diana will happily engage in small talk. Um, maybe chatting about her time in Campbell before uh, moving to Vera with her family. If there is anything in particular you'd like to ask, uh, we can we can go over that. Vera has introduced us to many of its issues. But what are some of its joys? Why do you stay here? <laughs> well, for one, as long as we are near the colony, it's actually rather safe. Perhaps one of the safest places I've ever lived in, especially now that uh, his radiance uh, is here with us. Uh, there have been a few issues, but, well, you know, uh, you know about the wolf. <laughs> and perhaps you've heard about the, the giant birds, too? Had, we've had our run-ins. The... Before the wolves became an issue, it, it was the birds that were uh, attacking us and our livestock. But well, that got uh, that got solved once the 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 gnomes came in. Uh, once they started walk working on that uh, on that train station and uh, placing down the rails, um, they took care of <laughs> the bird issue rather quickly. Oh, I see, um... Pip chokes a little on his drink. <laughs> <laughs> I see how that could have been, uh... Might have eased a great burden for you. I... may not be, um, the... Well, I did not have the education that my mother would have wanted for me, but... Uh, even if I'm not the, the scholarly type, I I can't say I'm not fascinated with the new, the new continent. Uh, it's always nice when those um, Itara come by. Uh, they always have something good to sell. Oh, especially um, the Yavelsi. Uh, there, there's one in particular that stops by very often. Oh, wow. Uh where do they usually go? Just to the town market? Uh, yeah. Um, the uh, Whenever it's a large group of them, they'll just camp on the northern northern side of the colony, but uh, the Avelsi... Hold on, I, I don't want to mispronounce it. Uh, Relivrak. Relivrak. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, something like that. He, he always comes straight to the market. Uh, um, he has this... This... Um, this animal pulling his wagon, it's its its like an elk, it's enormous, but it, it, it has red fur and, and goat horns. Oh, but but as big as it is, the legs are actually very short. It's, um, uh, Ilion, even when it was very short, he liked to reach up and pat it. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever seen such a creature. It's so soft! I'm very keen on uh, on meeting all the critters here in in Ladaria. I uh, I sketch them pretty often. I I can sketch too. Oh, but uh, you know that. <laughs> can I yeah, see? Uh, here, I'll take out my book and show some of my sketches. Ivan completely abandon abandons his dinner and is just going to grab. Uh, <clears throat> the sketchbook and uh, uh, go through it. While he's distracted, Pip grabs a piece of sausage and uh, just sort of lifts up his shawl and puts it down in there and you just hear Any more Particular questions for Diana? 
as if not, she will be, uh, she's, she's uh, politely asking a little bit about your lives and she'll listen to anything you may want to say. Uh, she, she, she just keeps good company and never lets uh, uh, silence uh, fall on the table, uh, but she won't, she will not pry on anything that uh, uh, you're not like immediately openly willing to, to discuss. Hmm. Um, Does good fish pass through this river? Plenty of it, actually. Um, we have a lot of uh, fishermen in town. Uh, this was... Before we brought in all the animals, it was actually our main source of food. Uh, before we figured out what we could even grow um, on this ground. And well, that that's part of the reason why the... The um, Itara Philly uh, come over so often. Uh, there's, uh, I, I I don't know the details, but there's something about um, a migration of certain fish that that come by um, every uh, twice or thrice a year, and and when they do, the river is so full of them that you actually see them just jump out of the water. Oh no. That sounds like quite a sight. <laughs> Are you got time to go fishing? No. Yeah, you can just <laughs> pick them up with your bare hands. Oh. Well, Pip, you could at least, uh. Maybe, maybe get a chance to pet one if you'd want. And warn them. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably a pretty good deal for farmers here. Uh, you own this land, right? Uh, yeah. It's... Everything around my farm is, uh, is mine. That's... Is that still... Can anyone do that? Just come over and... Place down the roots and... Grow food on their own land? Well, there was, there was, it, it was a bit of a pro, of a process. Um, my husband handled most of it, but uh, more people want to come here than uh, um, can actually be taken here. So uh, there was a bit of a of a selection, I guess. But as long as you're a Cambellian citizen and you can. you're strong enough to work the land, tend to the animals, so you bring some. A kind of unique skill that a colony needs, uh, you should be good. Hmm. And the uh, Darians are okay with, with people just settling on their land? Um, I, I wouldn't know the details, but, uh, well, I've had this talk once, uh, um, with uh, one of the the ones with the with the dogs, and uh, from my understanding, anyone is by their law allowed to be on the peninsula, and with anyone, they mean anyone. If you heard that, one of my cats just fell off the furniture. You have cats? <laughs> oh no. Well, well, well. Winter, would I know of anything historic on Ladaria that happened like between the Ladarians in case of in like something along the lines of a riot? Or is there being proper confrontations? Well, the colony settled. Roll a history check. He. Okay. Thirteen. To your knowledge, um, 
nothing that you would uh, be able to describe as a riot. In fact, nowhere close to that. Uh, you know that there are individuals that have been uh, mm -hmm. uh, bringing trouble to some of the colonists. Uh, that's something you deal with uh, uh, quite a lot, actually, in your line of work. Uh, in particular, the the attacks from the um, from the giant birds uh, of the Tarava are the most uh, well known example mm -hmm. of that. Um, but uh, to your knowledge, the greatest majority of the people that lived in the peninsula uh, before Lidaria was discovered by by Plurnans, um, allow this. Then I would probably join into the conversation. Yeah, from from my knowledge, it's, she's right about what she's saying. They allow us to be here, even though they're probably well. There are obviously some individuals that are not too happy about about us, which can be understandable. But in general, everyone is welcome. All I know is that we're not allowed. Uh beyond the peninsula or uh, I think you can go there you just can't build there ah oh, but even going there is quite a risky venture I, I would imagine it's never really been my concern that the uh, border is far from Vera but we're uh, here it's, it's good we can stay. What sorts of things do you grow here? And then you're just going to have a bit of more of a small talk. Uh, Alien <laughs> gets bored uh, after he is done going through the sketchbook. Um, he finishes food and he looks like um, he's not really going to engage with the conversation. Yeah, like there's a lot. That's true, uh, but. Let's say he puts it aside, um, okay. and he he will get back to it. But he's got something to do, and actually, um, he he's going to invite Pip uh, um, to go with him if he's if Pip is done eating. Mm, yeah. And Pip pretty much gets dragged uh, into uh, <laughs> what is uh, uh, certainly Alien and Fortis's room, and. Uh, uh, Alien hops on the bed and uh, pulls out a small box again and uh, places uses the lid of the box as like a surface to draw on um, and he gets out of charcoal and then he makes another drawing uh, of the same portrait uh, um, of the elf. Uh, sort of like looking sometimes at the one he, he already made but then he goes um, he takes it a bit of a different direction. Uh, it's from uh, a different perspective. The first one was directly from the front, but the second one is more, um, a little bit more from the side. Um, and he's, it's more of a sketch than the previous one was. It's a, a bit more rough, but it's done faster. Uh, in within like ten minutes, he has it done. And he, uh, he's going to to show it uh, to you. Wow. It, it, it's not as good as as um, Talix can can draw, uh, but but that's yeah, what he looked he's, like. He's a lot older, and he's had a lot of experience. Yeah, and he probably had some like teachers, right? Um, because I didn't get any teacher. I, I don't know. Maybe you could ask him. You should show him. You should show him that sketch in the other one you did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he can have this one, but he can't have the first one because I, I have all my other my other drawings on it. I like your room, by the way. Um, mom made us clean it. I had a lot more stuff around, but now it's all. And he like leans forward while still sitting on the bed, and he points. Uh, underneath it and when you when you hop down and look there's uh, all sorts of junk that has been pushed uh, underneath the bed is this all yours um uh, half of it got your own little dragon horde in here yeah but it's not as valuable well i don't know 
You want to see my old toys? <laughs> um. Yeah, okay. Okay, um. <laughs> Uh, they're in that box. So I'm just gonna take the drawing to 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 Talix. <laughs> All right. Oh. It just looks in the box, oh, alone in this room. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of the things in the box are made of wood. Um, the the, the majority of them. Some of them are tops, like the kind of um. Yeah, they're called tops in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You spin them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's the ones with a string around them that's supposed to sort of like toss them, but you hold onto the string. So when you pull, mm -hmm. you spin really fast. Um, and there's a wooden dice in here, something that looks like some kind of board game that is definitely missing half the pieces. Um, you wouldn't know how to play with any of them except the tops. Pip, steal something. No! <laughs> <laughs> Pip just uh, looks around a little bit more and pats the bed and he, he sits on it for a little bit and just looks around and thinks to himself. But then he, he heads back down. Yeah, Ealing leaves you alone for like 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, he just runs into the room uh, while Talix is still eating. He's sort of like, he places down the papers in front of him. And says, okay, gotta go. And he runs back. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, did you tell him the story? <laughs> Do I have to? A fortress yeah. can tell him? Well, that's the best part. Okay, um. Yeah, okay, can you come with me? Yeah, we can yeah. Take, we can take the box. Um, you don't have to... Okay. Takes the, the, the box and is going to leave it in the, in the living room. Well, uh, uh, Talix, you are left for about a minute or two alone without context um, with uh, the drawings, uh, two of them, of uh, the... I've what is it. recognizable? Uh, what is recognizably the same person that uh, you have dreamt about just a few days ago? Uh, so Elian is the one who dropped the drawing. The other one's name is Fortis. Or Fortis. Uh, I'll look to him pretty, like pretty quickly. Wait, what? What? What is this? What's What's he drawn here? Uh, well. Right, so... I'll flip to my own drawing in my in my sketchbook. Um, well, Pip said that we should tell you this because you'd find it interesting. Uh, and I know it sounds crazy, but it is totally true. Um, but we both had the same dream about the same person uh, in the same moment when um, when you guys showed up to help with uh, with the wolf. Um, and that's the guy. He looks... When you were hurt. Uh, yeah. When... Attack up. And just kind of, like, try to get his attention. Yes, that looks... I'll, I'll show him the drawings. Hmm. I had a very similar experience not too long after I met the rest of these people. When you set them uh, side by side, the two drawings and the, the sketch you made, uh, even if they're in a different cell from you, like you can you can tell there is a resemblance. In your in your sketch, uh, he was actually wearing a hood, while in Aliens, uh, um, he isn't. But uh, um, you still see the resemblance. He looks like an elf. Mm-hmm. Connected dreams. I told you, Talix, there is power and meaning in dreams. But it seems it only happens when you're near death. Not an experiment I'm ready to repeat anytime soon. 
No. Fortress Thank and you Liana so both uh, uh, seem just very uh, surprised to see that you also have a drawing uh, of the same man. Um, when Elian comes back with Pip and with the. Okay, a, now a tell box. him the story. Tell him what you saw. <laughs> <laughs> and he shows up and he's like, he opens his mouth, but then he stops and he points at the Talix's catch and says, that, That's him! You dream really well. I... I'm a little, uh... This is very strange. I'm, I'm really glad we met you, um... So you could tell us this. Do you but... know who he is? No, I don't. I've never met him before in my life. Is he bad? No reason to think so. Well, if Did we he, uh... see him when we're when we're hurt, maybe he's the one who comes to get our souls. Oh. Did he happen to say anything to you? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, he he was all like, um, ah. Uh, so he said like, oh, um, that's a visitor. Um, I uh, let's talk. Who are you? And then um, I didn't really get much of a time to reply. And then uh, um, it, it 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 was gone. Oh, you started to say something back. Uh huh. Did you give me your name? Uh, I I don't think I had a chance to. He he said um uh, he he I think he called me a godling. I don't know what a godling is, but he said little godling, uh tell me your name. Oh, he said don't don't go, um don't go too. I sort of wish the professor were here. Uh, let me write this down. <laughs> what? Fortis, did you talk to him? Uh, yeah. Uh, he was just really... Well, he noticed me and he said, uh, uh he said... That he didn't... Uh, he... The wording was weird. I think he said he... I wasn't made. And he asked me how I was made. How were you made? <laughs> oh, no. Um, um, I'll tell you when you're older. Huh? It is not a question to be answered tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, pardon me if this was rude, ma'am. Uh, sorry, this was just uh, very relevant to my interests. Um. Well, thank you both for sharing your stories. Well, if... Um... Uh, I, I, I tell you what, Alex, um, we have... Well, my husband had... It, it still works. We have a... Um, we have a world point card. Um, if... If this is something important um, that is going to affect my kids, uh, will you let us know? Oh, certainly. Uh, here, I'll give you my information as well. And you write down each other's uh, um, card uh, IDs? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Eileen is going to take uh, Talix's uh, sketchbook uh, and just go sit on the couch uh, with it uh, um, and trying to get Pip to be with him. Um, okay. Anything in particular that you guys want to talk about for the rest of the night? Um, Talos is going to ask if either of the kids, but probably especially Elian, ever had a, have an interest in education. You might just ask the mother. Um, with with Fortis and Liliana being the two that are left at the table, uh, Fortis answers for himself and says, oh, I'm good. Not, not really. Never really had a an interest. And Liana says, "Elian uh, does like to draw. I don't. Um, I can't really afford the all the paper he'd like, but I, uh, I try to do what I can." Well, uh. You know, place to buy it in town. Uh, paper? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is there is a stall at the market. Well. Okay, good to know. The church also has papers. I see. Um, Is there anything? Oh, else what's you this? Want what's to this decoration on the wall? Can you uh, <laughs> can you show me? It's over here. <laughs> okay. Um, it looks very. Uh, I'm I'm trying to get her away from the table for a second. Oh, you are. Yeah. Oh. Okay. This well, this she, clock she'll... looks very old and fancy. Tell me all about it. Um, I, she she will happily show you around uh, wherever you're taking her. Uh, she has like pleasant memories to share about this piece of furniture and that one decoration. I I don't remember exactly how much gold she gave us. Twenty pieces. Okay. I will give her twenty gold pieces. Oh. Uh, so she's in the middle of telling you how much this uh, this clock meant to her husband, and in in the middle of her sentence, she just finds herself with like your hands uh, wrapped around hers, so just pushing money into her fingers. <laughs> um, Good luck, Pip. No, they, they're not aware of this. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll just take laughs> <it off. laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. I'll let this moment pass. I'm good. You gave okay. me the giggles. Sorry, I'm gonna mute. Okay, I want you to know how genuinely appreciated her gesture was this and and your payment of course uh but for my part well i, I grew up in a home much like this one uh my mother struggled to raise me without without my father and well i had a lot of help to get where i am now and for my part I'd much rather this money went towards helping your children. That would be the best way to pay me <laughs> in my mind. So thank you. Liana's eyes widen as she realizes the, the, the amount of money uh, that you're returning to her. And she, she just like tries to sort of like push back against her hands and says, No, 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 no. I just I shake can't. my head. I can't. This was yours. It's just use it for your children and consider your debt repaid. Oh. Everyone else still got everything. This is good. <laughs> 
This is the best way forward. Uh, oh, Talix, I... Uh... Thank you. I, I, yeah, um... <laughs> I can definitely get, get him some parchment <laughs> with this. Good. He's uh, a bright young lad. And she tries to discreetly, not from you, but from the rest of the table, uh, get her eyes uh, dried. And she lets the, um, the coins gently fall into the pocket of a raper on. Um, then she just leans in for, for a hug. Just, yeah. Yeah, squeezes Talix for a moment. Just as, just a few seconds and then let's go. Oh. If you're still hungry, there's uh, more stew. Oh, certainly. It was delicious. Reminds me of my mother's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> the. Rejoin the table. Oh. Yeah, the rest of the evening is. Uh, uh, it's just pleasant. The it feels very normal. Um, when you're inside of this building, it all it almost for for those of you, um, for, uh, for the two of you that uh, have lived in Plurina, it almost uh, it's it's almost hard to tell what continent you're uh, you're even on anymore. Uh, there's this sense of normalcy and uh, safety that uh, uh, you may not have felt for a while. And you just... you just spend a few hours of your time in here until... until you're ready to go. Uh, Talix, you are returned your sketchbook and the... Um, Ilian takes back the parchment with all the other drawings on it. Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'll let him keep the paper that he drew on for me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, when you're when you're ready to go, you're accompanied to the door, and uh, uh, the family waves at you as uh, you return to to the rest of the colony. That was really nice. That was a very nice dinner. She's uh, she's a good person after all. <clears throat> kind of be. Well, yeah, she is definitely on the right way. But change is not that easy. Hmm. But I think today was a good start. Yeah. Not gonna lie, you don't see that that often. That people change their mind about something they were that stubborn before. She loves her sons. I like them a lot too. I'm gonna miss them. Yeah, me too. But uh, if you ever want to write them, I got their world point card. Oh, yeah! So, yeah, maybe we could have you write some letters. I'll need Give some paper. <laughs> it's very it's no expensive, problem. I've heard. It's okay, you earned your money, no pip. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably buy some food for the road, too. So that I don't have to keep mooching. Is that the right word? Yes, that's the right word, pip. Alright, well, we can worry about that tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tekka. Thank you for all being there. Tomorrow we need to decide how we are moving forward. Yes, as a group. All right, back to the tavern. 
far away uh, from the group heading back towards the rooms they have rented in their uh, uh, Pontifex. You have spent uh, the afternoon uh, meditating at this bend in the river, uh, pretty much undisturbed. Um, is there anything that you've done besides that that I should know about? Um, I think at some point during his uh, his meditation session, uh, he has removed the all of his armor and stuff, so he's just wearing like his vestments under it, mm -hmm. uh, and he has like walked into the river and submerged for an hour. Okay, so you left like all of your things uh, uh, yeah. away from the water. Uh, that would except include... for the golden orb thing, he brings that one with him into the water, but he goes in like uh, like sensory deprivation tank kind of thing for a full hour before heading back. But I think he does that, and like when his hour underwater runs out, that's whenever he he heads okay. back to town. So he's probably soaking, and I don't think he's even putting his armor on. I think he's like wrapped it up or something and is carrying it with him, but mm -hmm. he's not armored. Yeah, um, that's He's fine, that works. Back, like, soaking wet. The, um, is there a ever a point when you check, uh, uh, Jamuel during your, while you're separated from the rest of the group? Uh, I don't think he has Jamuel. I think he gave that to someone else before. Um, someone asked for it. He doesn't? Uh, no, I think, um, I think Brooke has Jamuel. I do? Someone asked. Uh, uh, someone asked for the book like the last time. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, we were at yes, the, someone no, has. Right. Someone has Jamil. It's not Pontifex. Yeah, really. I was wondering what was up. Because normally I mean, I'm under I... the assumption that like Pontifex has it unless it's been explicitly like given off. Uh, uh, I, 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 we can I think just it was say explicitly gave... given off. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I, I just took a look, and then we can just say give it back to you. Okay, like, that so was, maybe he does that was still back have... in the forest when uh, yeah when he wanted to see if. Uh, you remember yeah. him being like, let's see if our book says anything about this. <laughs> exactly, uh, so let's just say you have it. Unless... Okay. Yeah, no, we, I mean, we can decide that now, if uh, if uh, Matt would rather Brooke have it. Uh, um. uh, no, I mean, if it makes sense to everyone, then I guess if Pontifex would have been given the book back, then sure. Uh, I don't think so. I think he's pretty, he's pretty in his own thoughts at the moment. I think okay. he's actually forgotten that he has Jamuel. He would be in the backpack, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, especially if he's, like, you know, um, about to submerge himself in the river with, uh, like, right, taking right. off he, everything. Right, He, doffed all of his belongings mm -hmm. besides just the, the clothing that he wears under the armor and the the gold object. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you've spent about an hour just submerged uh, uh, in the water. Um, you know, until the sun is... Uh, roughly until when the time uh, the sun is starting to set? Or past that? Uh, I think he probably spent, like, including the hour underwater, not including the journey, he probably spent, like, probably four to six hours in meditation, and then plus another two for the journey. Mm -hmm. So it might be pretty late by the time he's coming back. He's probably not back until 10 p.m. ish. Yep. Okay. Um. That works. Let me just. Okay. Are we home before that or after that? Um. E... Hold on. Um. Hold on. Hold on. You would be home. Uh, a bit before that. Like, hmm. you might have spent two to three hours at Liana's place, so no, not past the 9 p.m. Um, and Pontifex, uh, as uh, kind of like towards the end of uh, um, when, you're, when you're starting to feel like perhaps the time is coming uh, uh, to return home, when the sun has already set and the, uh, the waters of the river are completely dark, uh, um, everything has gotten just very quiet around you. You can just hear the rushing of the river all around you. But then um, 
In this quietness, you hear this noise, a buzzing. At first, it seems like the buzzing of insects, but you've heard this buzzing just earlier today, too. Um, and you, you're pulling yourself up. Uh, you're going to re uh, you're going to be able be able to see this uh, um, glistening in the air as uh, uh, a large amount. Uh, 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 that's what that, that six. Uh, six mechanical birds are coming all around uh, your belongings, where your armor is, where your backpack is, and they're all descending onto it. Uh, the sound that you were hearing was like the whirring of the gears and the flapping of their metal wings. Uh, and we're gonna end the session here. Mm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not gonna lie, and we end the session here makes it sound a lot more dramatic. <laughs> oh. uh, turns out that Jason and I actually have somewhere to be. Oh, <laughs> way yeah. earlier than we thought we had, so we're actually kind of oh, late now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we gotta go. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Great uh, session. Do you have fun? Yeah. yeah. The, okay. the, the voice gimmick for Russell Gamir was that. Yes. Uh, very good writing. I, very, very good descriptions. Yay! Also, I'm, I'm very intrigued by this dream elf. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dream elf. <laughs> yeah, he's an elf now too. He really is Erebus. Yeah. <laughs> Purple skin, elf, appears in your nightmares. <laughs> that, that's totally an Erebus thing. I yeah. mean, makes sense. Near death? <laughs> yeah, also an Erebus thing, right? Yep. Uh, um, yeah. It's Erebus. <laughs> it's... <laughs> ah, okay. Um, thank you very much for playing with me today. Thank you for having been your most wonderful selves once again. Uh, I hope that we're going to play again very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely just uh, keep us updated on the schedule whenever uh, Jason's able to play. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Uh, we'll see you guys when we see you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.